Hey, hey, this is. Listen, listen, listen. I want to speak to uh, brother, uh, well, Dr. Ron Daniels, the professor. Right. I'm reading your thing. It's as you may, uh, well, you all should know. This is uh, Marcus Garvey's birthday. Right. I mean, let me take this off so I can read it. You know, well, you know. See, it's me, T, from the Patterson Safety Training Institute. That. Anyway, now it's part of an article. I think you wrote it uh, a couple of years ago. But it's the most, the most powerful and lasting symbol of unity uh, that Garvey presented and bequeathed to African people was the flag, right? The red, black, and green. And as you know, the red is for the, you know, for the, for the blood. You know, some, some, somebody say the suffering, whatever. The black is for the race, you know. And the green is for the vegetation on the land. That's what we used to say, you know. Or the land, the land that was stolen, you know. Or not, even, not stolen exactly, but, you know, keeps on being mined, whatever have you. But he goes on to say in this article and that, uh, that it became very popular in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, uh, this, uh, I guess it was a song. Every race has a flag but the coon. Every race has a flag but the coon. The, the uh, red, black, and green was officially ratified as a flag for African people at the 1920 UNIA convention. I actually, I, let me tell you something. I have a, a slight, but well, let me keep going at, at the convention, right? Um, Show me a race or a nation without a flag, and I will show you a race of people without any pride. Aye. Uh, in song and mimicry, uh, they, have, they, they, ha they have said, every race has a flag but the coon. How true, aye. Uh, but uh, that was said of us four years ago. They can't say it now. I guess he's... I guess the convention. So this race, black race, has a flag. The black race has a flag. Okay. Um, well, the flag uh, is significant, significant African people globally in the ceremony of, of the uh, IBW. I guess that's your organization now. Um, now public events, the flag is saluted by reciting words and the symbols, the uh, essence of the, that we believe Garvey intended the meaning of the flag. You know, oh yeah, the red uh, for the blood the, and the suffering of African people. That would be worldwide. Um, uh, black for the color and culture of our people, our people. and uh, green for the land stolen from us, which we have, which we will reclaim to build our nation. The black, well, the, okay, I'm sort of, okay, race, nation, I guess it's intertwined here. Uh, the red, black, and green flag was meant to be a symbol of pan-African unity. Gotcha, here we go. Indeed, the influence of flag. Oh, oh, this is good. Indeed, the influence of Garvey uh, was such that the colors appear in flags of Malawi, Kenya, uh, and Ghana, and Ghana, in Africa, and Saint Kitts in the areas uh, of the Caribbean. I love the Malawian flag. In fact, I have this whole thing. I really want me. You don't know this, but I, maybe you do know this. Um, I live in South Africa right now. But the Malawian flag is my favorite flag, and all the flags. The Malawian, I'm, I'm surprised. I have a little one, but it's in Africa. I got stuck here. You know, right now, I'm in, I'm in St. Louis. <laughs> I got stuck here because South Africa closed the borders. They closed the borders specifically to U.S. citizens, you know, and I'm a U.S. citizen, even though... Oh, let me show you. Hold on, hold on. Let me get my thing right here. Man, my passport. Now, as you know, race is a race. You know, we're a Pan African race. Uh, you know, us Pan Africans. Why well, should say? Yeah, I'm a Pan African. Us Pan Africans, we don't have a flag. I mean, we have a we have a Marcus Garvey flag, but we don't. And I usually have my little red, black, and green flag. But I think I was traveling, and it's I think it's in the bags. I left them in New York. It's in a bag in New York or something like that. So I only have a well. This fine flag. This brother in Harlem made this flag. You know, you've, you've seen this. I particularly like this one too. I like it. I'm gonna say better than than the, than the red, black, and green because I've been so so long associated. But, but look, when you travel, you have to have a passport. You know that you travel, <laughs> and so when you travel with a passport, they have your not your race but your nationality. In fact, the first thing right here it says right here, in the thing, da, 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 uh, nationality, United States of America. It doesn't say you can't unless you have a Pan African passport, but we don't have a. Usually, nations have armies and flags or whatever have you. So we have a flag, but no passport. That's a, that's recognized and no da da da. da. 
But look, let me tell you what happened. This is what this is what's so upsetting. This is sort of a, it's a, it's a I won't say a new passport. Well, it is. I've, I've had passports for years. This is my. I, I have a permit, you know, for South Africa, right? And uh, it's, it's 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 called it's called a, a, a relative's permit. It's a temporary residence. It's, I get it every two years, you know. And I, you know, say, well, how'd you just get a permanent residency? They go, well, I'm gonna get into that. There's a whole bureaucracy with South Africa. But here's the thing. So they granted me because that's what's why I came here. I came here in, in March to get this, you know, renewed or whatever have you. And um, what happened was that's when COVID hit, and boom! <laughs> in fact, the South Africa, the the, the, embassy, the embassy, it's called the embassy, but the, embassy, the consulate here, they had they they closed down and left. So my passport was actually locked in the, in the consulate, right? <laughs> oh gosh! So anyway, they came back eventually, and they told me, hey, the, then you know they're gonna send me the passport. They didn't say they didn't send me the passport, so they sent it to me. You know, it says right here, you know, blah blah blah. It's good into 2022 because every every two years you get you know March 2022, right? And it says uh, admitted to for, for two years uh, to reside with S A spouse something. I can't read that. Uh, and then then they give her ID number, right? Because my wife is Af African, I've got to tell you, she's African. In fact, she she's African. She made she made this hat. I know it's sort of Nigerian design, but she made she she made the hat right there. Oh, the, the, this top comes from you know uh, my my brother in in New York. You know my fraternity brother, well, my brother in New York. He's Pan African to the core. You you may know. I'm not gonna say his name. I'm not gonna say my name. He's you know him to the core. In fact, my um my uh, uh my these pants are pimped up by my but my. By my by my wife, you know. Look, see. Oh, you hear this? Okay. This here. You see this? This here. This actually. These. Are, I would take them off. No, I'm not gonna take. They haven't taken off here. This was made for me. This was made for me. If I can take it off. This was made for me. It don't want to come. Oh yes, it don't want to come. This was made for me in the state of Tamil Nadu, in southern, in south. Basically, it's the southeast India, right? These are mango seed pods, right? These were made for me. I've had them for years, man, because I got these a long, long time ago. And they were made for me by some Tamils. Tam Tamil, Tamil, you know, Tamil people, they're, they're basically the color of these, <laughs> of these mango seed pods. And they look like us, you know. In fact, when I put, when I put on the regular shirt, the Tamils have these, these little, like, uh, button, you know, you know button-down shirt uh, with, uh, you know, with the pocket in it, and you have to wear the longy, you know, so I put the, and if I shave, you know, like that, and I'm riding around in Tamil back, they're speaking to me, yapping to me in Tamil, shows you, you know, black people all over the world, we, you know, we all look alike or whatever have you. In fact, Tamil, talk about Tamil, that's what, hey, Kamala Harris, oh Lord, she's, she's supposedly Tamil, now you have to understand, this area, Pondicherry area in the southeast, this, this was, um, they actually, I want to say succeeded from, from India, but, but when World War II happened, they, they were like uh, under French, under the French. That's why this guy, the place I stayed sometimes in Oroville, where I've been there, Oroville, uh, it's named after this guy, uh, Sri Aurobindo. And he, he had this vision like that, that the, the colonials was going to get him. And so he left it basically that night they were supposed to come and get him. And he ran to Pondicherry because that was under the French, you see. The rest of the Indians under, 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 under English, you know, they were going to assassinate him, whatever have you. There's a whole toilet tale of that. But in fact, in fact you know, when he's over there, Here's interesting, you know in India, you know what they do? You know, all the people, they, 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 they do like this, Namaste, you know, they, that's how they salute, like that. I have for years, for years, I've been saluting like this. I just do that, just normal, I used to do this, I still do it, you know, normal like that. When I realized, when I got to, when you get to Sri, Sri Aurobindo's, the Sri, the people that follow Sri Aurobindo, that's the way they salute. Amazing, isn't it? I'm connected. I was going to say, I love that when I went there. But look, that's so how I got this back, right? I just figured, hey, I can get up. But you know what they say right there? This is what nations do. It says canceled without prejudice. Canceled without prejudice. Because of the colonial thing. So I can't get back to, I can't get back to life. This whole corona thing gets, gets gets resolved, you see? So I can't even get back with my passport. Or oh, actually, well my passport I guess I could sneak in because you know I know people, you know, see in that whole region, I mean, you know, you you're in DRC, wherever you are, you, you can get down to South Africa. There, there are ways, but I don't speak all the languages, so, you know, I might have a little problem there. So anyway, oh, well, I was reading, I was reading the thing. So, I, I'm sorry I have me, this, this might be a long one, so just, you know, hold your hands, hold, hold, hold on to your thing. Uh, flag design, uh, the colors of liberation. In fact, you know, the, here's the, oh, here, uh, 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 here's the, he says, uh, you say, I say, 
uh, I shall never forget the hundreds of flags waving in the breeze in the African Liberation Day in 1972. Uh, I was in the Air Force in 72. I missed that one. See, I was in the Air Force. I'm a veteran. Yeah. I was in the Air Force in 72. I missed that, that African Liberation Day. I've been to a lot of other African Liberation Days. Don't worry about that. Uh, 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 with some 25,000 gathered in Washington, D.C. to demand the liberation of the last colonies in Africa. It was a glorious sight. One Marcus Garvey must have been pleased from his uh, ascendant perch at, uh, with the ancestors, okay? Yeah, you know, my thing, when, and like, when I had my little incident with the sea, you know, I had a little incident with the sea, I was, I was tired, I was long, but before we year I was in the neck brace, whatever have you, but I was, I was in, um, Silver, I was recovering in Silver Street, Maryland. And I was, I was hanging with this sister, Nikenji, and she has a daughter, um, uh, Indigo, right? And so they had an African liberation, I was there, African Liberation Day, actually since 1972. Right? They was out and went to the parade with, 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 down in D.C. This was, yeah, 2002. And so, but I was, you know, I was injured, you know, so I had to stay there. So when they came back, it was a still a glorious sight. This was amazing. But, uh, Indigo busts through the door, and she has a little African liberation flag, right? Okay, fine. Then the kids you come, she's wrapped in a huge African liberation fan. That's a memory. Oh, anyway, I need to talk about memory, sorry. Um, uh, then, then you're going to say, um, in an article I noted that uh, New York, I guess you wrote an article some, sometime, right? That New York, on the day of the Puerto Rican Day Parade, the Puerto Rican flag is on prominent display throughout the city. The, the, it applies to the parades of Dominicans, Colombians, and other Latino nationalities in New York, and some uh, of the largest uh, pro-immigration reform. And some, oh yeah, okay. Demonstrations a few years ago, there was a sea of Mexican flags, so much so that it provoked a backlash by opponents to a reform who labeled the demonstrations un-American. Oh, people, you know, you know how white people get, you know. I firmly I firm believe that Africans in America, indeed African people everywhere, should embrace the red, black, green uh, as our flag and fly displays the rallies and demonstrations, public events, uh, public holidays uh, as a unifying pan-African symbol of affirm self-affirmation, resistance, and self-determination. Right? And on the birthday of Marcus Garvey, which is today, it's the 17th, right? Universal African... Flag Day, the red, black, and green should be proudly on display. We have a little slight thing. Come on now, you professor. You know, remember, the African liberation flag is a race flag. The flags, all these flags you mentioned here are nationality flags, right? So your race might be black, but your nationality, well, if you're wherever you are in the diaspora, you're, like, for instance, my nationality is American. You don't like American flag? Like that, okay. I mean, you know, you know, this is, this is, come on, you're a professor, you're, you're a doctor, you know these things, you're a doctorate, whatever it is. Right. Frankly, my initial call for Garvey's birthday to be declared Universal Flag Day as an act of Kujitakalia, self determined you know, Kujitakalia from, uh, from uh, talk about Iran, uh, Ron Karenga, you know, you hold the whole, the, you know, in fact, this year, you know, I have to travel around, I got to go back to New York, then I got to go, got to go to family in Virginia, also I vote in Virginia, I'm voting, and then, and talk about, talk about, you know, remember the, 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 the Tamil Indians? Guess what? Kamala Harris is, is Tamil. But she's not Tamil like the dark skinned Tamil like us. She's like Brahmin Tamil. So she's come from that stock, the Brahmin stock. So, you know, down in that area, they really got that caste system down. You know, I, I only I hang with the I hang with the with the people that look like us. You know, they, they made this for me. You know, I, this is a long story. Well, it's not a long story, it's a story. Uh, Anyway, uh, so I'm sorry. So when I get back, uh, come back here in St. Louis for for the Christmas time, you know, because you know uh, Kwanzaa starts the day after Christmas. So I get to, I get to celebrate another. Well, yeah, I get to celebrate just Kwanzaa because usually I'm in Africa. Africa doesn't have Kwanzaa. I've been in Africa since 2003, you know. So Africa doesn't do Kwanzaa, but here they do Kwanzaa. So I I can hang out with St. Louis, East St. Louis, East St. Louis. Can't get no blacker than that. <laughs> do a Kwanzaa thing, you know. Okay. Uh, uh, but sparked by the Black Lives Matter movement, there is a new spirit of resistance in the air. I am noticing more and more red, black, and green flags. Like this one here. That one right there. And the regular rest of the red, black, and green. Like, huh? 
therefore encouraged by the events of the forthcoming Million People's March for Justice Urging Dr. Uh, okay, anyway, this whole goes into something like that. Uh, you know, now, now, the reason why I bring all this stuff up to you, right, is that we have a situation. Like I said, I live in Africa. And everybody has these, especially us, us brothers, you know, we got, we got this whole notion of Africa. Africa is, remember, Africa is 55 nations, as you well know. Now, some people say 54, but they're wrong. It's 55, right? And Africa is a continent. <laughs> Africa is a continent. It's a big, big, big continent, you know? It's, Africa's huge <laughs> with all kinds of realities. Just like here in the United States, we have all kinds of realities. You know, I heard that, 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 that the U.N. came here in this large county, Mississippi. Um, that they have hookworms in the thing. The poorest, they say it's the poorest thing. That, that. And, of course, we got, if you're in New York, you got the New York thing. You got the Seattle. You know, we got all kinds of reality. What's the same? And we're just one country. You know, like this. We're just one country. You know what I mean? This is a huge country. You know, I live south. There's some places in Joburg that's like palatial. <laughs> Actually, I live in a little village. I live in a little it's not a shack, but I live in a little, little, tiny little house. Of the, you know, it doesn't matter. But there's a lot of different realities. And so people are sort of, they're sort of, I don't know. They have these, I don't know what they have. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking about Africa, you know. And of course, you can always show this and that and that and that. When I first came to Africa, actually, uh, when I, I was, uh, I had come to synagogue, door no return, the rest of it was on a trip, whatever. And I, then they invited me back. So the next month I came back, I was up there, that's playing, I was in uh, Chiroy, you know, synagogues above above the car, you know what I mean? Even I went to uh, the Holy City of Tubar, you know, well, you look that up, don't worry about that. But one of the places I was I was in the Gambia, right? And I was just sitting on this, uh, laying, leaning on this car. These brothers asked me, because this was, you know, they asked me about uh, America, and they wanted to call it America, and whatever. I said, oh, I said, well, you know, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I said, you, say, you see this car? You know, so you see the hub caps right there, the, the, those wheels right there, they look really good, don't you? Well, that's what they do in America. They show you the shiny wheels, right? But let's put it back. Look at this car. This car, is, it's not a wreck, but it's not its not as good as looking as you would think it is. That, that's what happens in America. So I have to explain that to the brothers. Right? Well, it's the same thing all over. But here's the thing. Here's the problem. Not the problem. Here's the situation. So my connection with the states, you know, I, of course, I have my people's, you know, always you know, checking, you know, and one of my people, he was on, I don't do Facebook, right, I just do this YouTube channel, and, and I just got on Instagram, but I just do little tiny things on Instagram, doesn't matter, but he said that you was on a, you was on a, a Facebook uh, Zoom call or something like that, and you know what he said, he said, you just miffed, you just said something about, you know, ADOS, it's like, they're, they're funded by some nefarious things, I was like, what, that's what he told me, so I'm just, I'm just asking you, right, you know, AD, AD, ADOS, where's my, where's my thing, where's my thing, oh, here we go, ADOS, ADOS, I was sitting in Africa, right, and I first heard it's ADOS, I said, hey, no, let me go back, it goes before, in 2000, in 2015, right, um, I, um, I was, a. Uh, my research group is in Dimbaza. It's, it's Dimbaza, the famous Dimbaza. The, the, the last grave of Dimbaza is a film. Don't worry about it. It's a film. And uh, I, I, that's my research group there. You know, I have ties there. You know, I'm with the fellows all the time. So when I first came there, you know, all the kids has got to, you know, they got different children. Well, young, young, young men, like you know, 17, 18, 19, or to about, I guess, this youth age is like up to 35. Anyway, so when they was introducing themselves at, at that place, and I have, but that's 2015, I had been in Africa since 2003 by then, but I was mainly in Cape Town, you know, I was when I was doing some stuff with, you know, some, some like, I was Marcus, you know, Philippi, Marcus Gabi Village, you know, in some rough areas like Danoon, you know, I was living in Cape Town, so I was all over, you know, I was more work with working young people, I had my, I teach at university, don't, don't, don't worry, I was teaching, <laughs> okay, it's at University of Cape Town, you know, whatever, teaching audio drama, that's my specialty, you know that, brother, it's me, Tate. From the Patterson's taking the train to bed. You know me, I'm the audio dramatist, man. You, come on now, you know who you're talking to. BAI, come on. All them years when, when, when Lombard Braff was running the uh, Patrice Lumumba uh, Coalition, you do speeches there and stuff like that. You know, I'm the recordist from there. You know, recordist for that and, and Samori and whatever have you. Uh, with Bernard, you know, you know, doing Bernard's emanations when it, in the heyday before it really, really got big, you know. I'm the cat. You, you don't even know who I am. You know who I am. I think we even did something 
I think when I came back, I was coming through, and uh, under W W Bush, right? They was doing, and I, I did this whole thing when I did. I think it was the Bill of Rights or something, whatever. I was recording something for the Constitution or something like that. I did it for the station because you know, I'm an engineer too. Yeah, I'm an engineer. I engineered the Bill me with you know a Africa kaleidoscope. You know who I am? <laughs> Make it like you don't. Anyway. So when they, the kids was 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 introduced to me, they would go do this long and they would go do these long names. I said, wait a second, wait a second. How, how many last names do you got? They said, oh, that's our clan name. This is your clan name? We said, oh yeah, you know we was you know, basically it's like Jesus. You know you go do the begat, 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 begat. It's like that, right? So I was like, what? I said, I want a clan. And I'm telling you, so I, came, I came to the state. Well, I, I had to come back every few years, right? And I immediately ran to. To, 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 to Professor James, you know, Prophet James, James Small, you know James Small, right, you know, and you know, the professor just means teacher, you know, the doctor thing, that comes from a university has to get you a doctor, so basically your colleagues give you your, your bona fides, you know, give you your, your doctor top title, you know what I mean, but the professor, anybody can be professor, in fact, you know, where I am in Alice, you know, uh, in the bet that they call me prof all the time, hey prof, hey prof, but anyway, so I was excited, so I'm there for me, and I'm going, James, I need, a, I need a clan, you know, and and so in fact, it's, it's on video. Maybe I'll put the link here. It, 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 he went through this whole thing, the history of, of black people in the states, and and, and, and how it was the slavery and all. He went through this whole thing to get to clan, but we never resolved. He said, "Well, you know," but he said, "Hey, uh, I think he said a black clan is good enough for me, African American, whatever, whatever he said, you know." And I was still unsatisfied, so I got Dr. Leonard Jeffries. I got him on tape and said, you know, and he said, what was it James for you? And I said, and I told that, and we still didn't come to a thing. It was back and forth, whatever it was like that. Okay, so that's in 2015, 16. So about 2017, I'm in, you know, I'm in Africa. I'm doing some you know, on my computer because I have to, you know, I have people that tell me stuff, but also I, I'm an internet kind of person. I internet, and so all of a sudden I have been following this guy. I mean, anyway. Found this one woman, Yvette Cornell. I, then they went to some sort of conference with the Angela Project or something like that they did. And she hooked up with this brother. Um, like I hooked up, I mean, you know, intellectual. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Antonio Moore. He's a, he's a um, what do you call it? He's a lawyer, you know, from L.A. And she's she's a cop. She, she, she used to work on the Hill, the Hill, many, you know, politics, you know, Washington, D.C. But she's based in Georgia, right? So they, so they came to this intellectual kind of thing. And they named... They named our circumstance, our lineage. They named it America here, right there. I got this T-shirt from the first conference they had last year. I was here this year to have the second conference because COVID, we ain't had no conference, whatever. But you see, American, see right there, American sentence of slavery, right? Politics is an exchange, not a gift. This is the shirt that Antonio. The very few people have this shirt. Antonio Moore. There, I, I wear this, right? So, so I'm going like, I'm sitting there saying, hi, it like hit me like a thing. Because it was basically, I'm telling you, it was this thing was in the air. It was, it was, you know, you, know, you, 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 know um, you have all kinds of movements to have reparations or whatever, and that's always been in the air for a long time. I, was, I was hung out with Queen Mother Moore, come on, you, you know, I, you know who I am. It's me, Tate, from the Pattersons, taking the train, from the Patterson Housing Project in the South Bronx. The South Bronx real, you know, Mount Haven section. The BAI, is it with that? 505 8th Avenue. I became arts director. You know who I am. Anyway. So, so, so it hit me. I said, that's accurate. I said, that's it. Because it, it's not just, your, it's not just your, your, your race. You have to identify with a nation. We are, and, and, and what they, they, was, they was explaining is that, which I knew already, was, that's why it hit me so much. It said, this is an accurate explanation of who I am, who what my my lineage comes from, you know, through the Middle Passage, you know, wherever you want to be in Africa, whatever it is, because you know, I want to do this whole thing, but you know, I'm I'm Africa from Cape to Cairo, I'm not going to do that thing. But the Middle Passage, right? Then you then you get to then you get to well, especially American slavery, you know, chattel slavery, because I actually say American North American descendants of chattel slavery. That's what I say, even though it's just the title is official. Okay, it doesn't matter. So what happens is I'm going like. This is so accurate because this shows my lineage coming from my, 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 my yeah, of course, I mean, my lineage goes past slavery, whatever. But for purposes of, of especially uh, if you're going to get reparations, we have a, the beef is with, you have to do with a nation. The nation and the beef with that we got to get the thing back from would be the United States of North America. 
right? If I was Haitian, then my beef would be with, with France and England or whatever. Have you? If I was, you know, whatever country, you know, you have your beef with some whatever it is. That you got to go to that country to get your retribution, to get your get your repair, to get your reparations. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so I'm like, this is so amazing, right? And plus, it, it actually just goes from slavery to antebellum, you know, to the whole Jim Crow thing, you know, the, the, even the chain gang, you know. That's where we got our blues from the chain gang. I don't give a deal. Because, you know, Archie Rex, I have to have a musical bit. Leave that part up. Goes to that, right? Goes through the whole lynching stuff, you know, the whole da 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 da. So, just, our reparations goes through all that stuff, you know what I mean? But we have to have a nation. So, so I heard that you was on the Zoom thingy with this talk about reparations, and you you disparaged ADOS. I said, what are you talking about? How did you disparage ADOS? Why? Why? What did they do? Because you have this thing about the flag. You don't want to deal with the American flag. ADOS is a, our flag. Is and you? I know we were up north. We did the Black Power movement, and that's where we got that stuff from. That seventy two, whatever. But before that, remember all that whole 60, 60, um, the civil rights movement before sixty five. Before the remember before. You know, even though Marcus Garvey's flag was around, but before that, the Civil Rights Movement, you could see those were American flags with cameras, because that's who we are. We are Americans. Americans you know? And when, uh, when other Caribbean, when other people come, like from the Caribbean or Ghana, whatever, they bring their flags too, and they be, that's their flag. They march up. Their nation, not their race. But you can also, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, national. I'm Marcus Garvey. I'm Pan African, yeah. But my political head right now, my accurate description of my lineage, it's ADOS. Do you get it? It's not mutually, they don't cancel out each other. I'm all one. <laughs> all one. <laughs> From my head, my crown, to my ankle. <laughs> yeah, I even throw the Indians in there. Whatever. I, 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 I like the Tamil Tigers, you know what I mean? Down there, like, okay, that's man. So, so, so for you to say, like, the, the, the so, you know, Yvette Cornell and, and, and Antonio Moore are being funded by some nefarious that you can, you, you don't ex, you don't identify? How could you do that? Brother, it's me, T, from the palaces taking the train to Tibet. You're a professor. I mean, you're a doctorate. You do research. You're supposed to have evidence when you call somebody out. Do you understand that? Oh, please. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, back to the point. So I'm going like, hey, how could they do that? Why would that brother do that? You know, I guess he maybe he has an agenda. Maybe he's paid, but, but I won't do that to you, brother. Brother, I'm not going to do that to you. Look, it's, it's sometime after. I don't know what time it is right now. But, you know, uh, you're, I think your program comes in. Your program's going to be on today. Now, that's be like 2 o'clock, something like 3 o'clock. Yeah, about 3 o'clock. I think you come up for 3 or 5. I'm going to tune in because I'm here in St. Louis. I'm an hour. I'm like... Two o'clock. It'll be two o'clock here. I, I, I can make your program. I'm gonna listen to what you got to say. But man, look, they're not mutually exclusive. Okay, you can still be if you want to really be Pan African. You know, you got some problems in, Pan in Africa. Get the Pan African Army, right? Because Nigeria's having some problems in the northern parts because they only control the cities and stuff like that. You know, Boko Haram. They got to stealing. They steal, you know ISIS, whatever they are. They they stealing people. They stealing. They're stealing our children. They're stealing female children, impregnating them, taking them up, you know, for walk, whatever they're, they're doing. You got to stop that. What's that? Uh, the, 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 what's that? NATO. It's down in Africa. All of the down in Africa. You got some bigger fights than to be fighting with Eddie Vett and, 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 and Tone. Don't be fighting now. Take the Pan-African Army and do what we're supposed to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm actually in Africa doing something. I can't. Just, no. You know? Don't be jumping on the people that because they actually describe themselves and you don't want to. If you don't want to be, uh, well, you can't. You can't uh, look. look, if you come, if you a DOS, you can't deny. It. You can say you can, look. Here's here's the problem. A DOS is a designation. Whether you accept it or not, it doesn't matter. You still designate like you black. You you black. You black. You black. Black. You just a designation. I think your argument is with the political aspect of the designation. You know words. The politics of ADOS is what you don't agree with. You want to go to something else, you're still black. You go with something. So ADOS is still black, like Kamala Harris is black. <laughs> but does she have an interest, you know? Yes, yeah. Can Kamala... Send Kamala Harris a Pan-African flag and see if she flies. Send her American flag that's her nationality now because she was born here. She going to fly that. You get what I'm saying? Okay, you understand. 
Just a little suggestion message from me, T, from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. 